welcome back. Another day, another vlog. What a day. It's a big one today. What a show. We've got a lot in store for you today. Two pages. That's a lot of gear, a lot of, lot of tech stuff. Most of it happened Friday. We're going to get all into that. There's a lot of tech news and camera stuff we want to talk about. Um, new video for the channels up as well. There's a fair bit. Let's get stuck into this show for Monday. Welcome back the podcast people. Great to have you listening in. I uh, hope you all had a great weekend wherever you are. Hopefully you got out and had a little bit of exercise and got out of the house if you were stuck in with restrictions. Um, <clears throat> yeah, not fun for anyone at the moment. So hopefully you've had a chance to get a bit of normalcy. Let's get this volume right on the iPad. So the new video is up. If you haven't seen it, Curtis Cutting, a uh, good mate of mine from work that's worked here the whole time as me. Um, we, I think we've been here 11 and a half years now, quarter of our life in one mind side, which is just crazy. Uh, he come out, he wanted to come for a bit of a walk, said, yeah, come with us, I'm going to do a video up on the hill, a uh, little cutting on the end, end of the main hill over here. Uh, named it Curtis Cutting. I'm trying to name stuff so it's easy for me to remember where I've gone and what I've done. I think it adds a little bit of something to it, a little bit of, it's easy to remember things if they mean something to you, I guess. So yeah, Curtis is uh, my best mate and his family, we've known each other since we were basically born. Uh, both families have been family friends. We're sort of all like brothers and sisters just about. So it, uh, I thought it was a good one to uh, name after them. And he's done a lot for me since I moved to Perth. So it's pretty cool. Beautiful little, I call it a cutting. Um, it's basically like a cutout uh, or erosion off the top of the mountain. And it's just opened up. And yet again, another amazing waterfall in it. So go check out the video. It went live last night. I was a little bit delayed. It's been a long week, a long week, uh, some late nights, and not feeling 100%. Um, a little, little bit flat. I think it's just lack of sleep. I think I've averaged about three hours all week. So, yeah, looking forward to shift change and getting a little bit of sleep, and we'll talk about that as well because I'm probably going to shoot out and do some astro, but there's a bit of cloud floating around. So I, it's a cloud, and the thunder cloud stays around. It's probably get better to go out in the daytime, but I want to get some sleep, so we'll toss it all up. I'll work it out and make a video anyway, so it won't be too bad. So, lots happening there again this week. If you haven't already, Road Reel is in the vote mode, so our video is up. A lot of people I've put it over on the Facebook page. If you haven't voted already, you haven't checked out Road Reel, go check it out. Go to myroad.com and then you'll see on their main banner the link to the Road Reel competition. And if you go to if you filter down Australia drama and Australia drama and English, you it only gives you about five pages to go through. There's tons, there's hundreds of people on there uh, doing some amazing work. So if you haven't if you've run out of things to watch on YouTube, there's three minute short films you can go and watch from all around the world. Some creators like myself that are just putting what putting out there what we you know, what we enjoy and what we do. It's great to see that Road keeps sponsoring that every year. It's a really good competition, and if you're lucky enough to to score a win, a lot of money. It's seventy. I think it's each category is seventy five thousand US dollars plus probably another twenty thirty grand's worth of gear. So it's a massive massive competition. Um, if you haven't already and you're a supporter of the channel. I'd love you to go over and vote for mine. It's, uh, it means something to me. Uh, it's very close to my heart, that video. And I think, I guess like most creators there, a lot of it's going to be very personal to them. But uh, it would mean a lot to me if you're a subscriber. If, or if not, just go check it out and watch a few videos. Plenty for you to check out. There's hundreds of videos on there. So it's going to be a very tough con. I'd hate to be a judge having to sit there and watch like two, three hundred three-minute films and then score them and then oh, it'd be just a nightmare. Very tough job for those guys. Very, very cool. <clears throat> Rightio, let's get into this news. There's a ton here. I'll try and get through as quickly as possible because, yeah, there's a bit. It's a lot. <laughs> Rightio, uh, Canon on Friday, uh, Canon Rumors dumped a CR2 level uh, rumor, which is not uh, beyond craziness. Um, it's sort of fairly accurate and shouldn't be too far off the mark. Basically, the lens roadmap for 2021. Now, unfortunately, it's only RF, which is 
I think the big that's the big news I took out of this. I'll go through all the RAF stuff they're going to do, and then we'll talk about the sad stuff from this announcement, I guess. Radio, so you are going to be getting uh, pretty shortly. We're going to have a RF seventy to two hundred F four L uh, image stabilized USM, um, only Coke can size, so it's going to be really, really small, uh, tiny little zoom lens. There, that will be pretty cool. Uh, external zoom on that, so Coke can size for seventy to two hundred. That's pretty insane. Uh, on the rest of the ones coming out for twenty twenty one. This is, I'll just run straight through the specs. We won't talk too much, of, and I'll talk a little bit at the end. So 50 mil 1.8 STM, better than the EF version. Uh, a T, two tilt shift models, a TSR 14 mil F4 L series, a TSR 24 mil uh, 3.5 L, a 10 to 24 F4 L USM. 14 to 35 f4 l image stabilized usm a 24 mil 1.8 image stabilized stm macro so <clears throat> the macro on the 24 35 mil f 1.2 usm uh, 100 mil 2.8 macro image stabilized 134 135 sorry 1.4 usm 100 to 400, 5.6 to 7.1 image stabilized, a 400 2.8 image stabilized, a 500 uh, 4 image stabilized, a 600 4 image stabilized, an 800 5.6 image stabilized, and a 1200 F8 uh, image stabilized. Wow. If you have an RF Canon, you are laughing. You're not going to have to worry about glass because. Uh, CR2 and Canon Rumors are pretty good in regards to this. Uh, once it gets to like a CR2 or a CR3, it's fairly accurate. You might get some changes in specs or costs or stuff or, or dates might be a little bit off. But if uh, if he's, uh, he's pretty much got it from a reliable source, so 2021 is going to be a massive year for glass for Canon uh, for the RF mirrorless range of lenses. Now, what that also says is nothing for EF, nothing for EFM. That's bad. EF, I think everyone sort of seen, knew that EF was going, and that was it. I think we talked about it uh, over the last 12 months. There's been a lot of talk about that. There's probably not going to be any more EF glass coming from Canon. I think that was sort of understandable. Full frame, they're not going to make full frame lenses that only suit an old system. They've gone mirrorless. They're putting their money on mirrorless like Sony has. <clears throat> and this RF, lanes, uh, RF range, you can see now with the... RP, the R, the R4, R6, R5, and then next year's rumored R1, whatever that'll be named, the 1DX version, mirrorless. They, they've got the cameras now. They're going to have a pro camera next year. We know they get massive, and then there's massive amount of lenses coming. They're going to be pretty much covered. Already the Holy Trinity's out, the 2.8s, the amazing glass is out. Uh, and then now this should complement all that amazing glass to suit all the cameras and everyone's had a chance. Now they can go in and get some budget lenses and primes to suit whatever. So RF-wise, really, really good news. Fantastic. It's an expensive system though. Uh, RF lenses, uh, cameras, yeah, even the RP, which is a base model full-frame lenses in Australia, is just under two grand just for the camera. I can go to Olympus and get a full, or not the full frame, I can get their top of the range, fully weatherproof sealed pro camera, their 1DM, for two grand at the moment. That's a massive difference. You're getting the cheapest, crappiest one that's not built to withstall, uh, with, uh, withstand anything really, or you can get a super pro camera. Yes, it's APS-C size sensor, but it's 20 megapixels, and it's going to just do everything, and you can basically take it in the shower with you, and it's going to be fine. So that's that's where the, the only difference I have is, like the it's a RF lens is mega dollars, because it's not just the body at two grand, then you've got the lenses and all the other stuff to suit it. It's a big, big, big cost if you're going to go up from an APS-C to go up, and that's where I have my issue. We have heard about the M50 Series 2 we reported on here, uh, that's due out any time now. We're wait, just waiting for the announcement. We've heard about this pro 
pro APS-C or uh, M7 model type scenario, and that was due out again this quart this year before Christmas. And well, that we haven't heard too much else. The biggest problem with the M range, and I'm pretty sure I can put my hand up for this as an owner and as to all the talk on the internet about it is the glass. Now, it wasn't until Sigma brought out the 16mm, the 30 and the 56 last year, those three 1.4 primes, which is amazing. I've got the 16mm on now and it is just insane. Um, that's when the M, that they give, that was a resurgence for the M's. This, okay, we've got finally got some really nice, fast, beautiful glass. Rightio, now we need some zooms. Nothing. And here's what is basically the Canon lens roadmap for the whole of next year. Not one single M, line, M range or M EFM mounted lens. There was rumors of five coming. Is that over with? And that's what I take out of this one. It's just concerning. I hope to Christ those five lenses they talked about at least are going to come out. Um, there's nothing either in any sort of roadmap for Sigma to bring out some zooms for the M, M range. It's looking really scary. There's also that rumor saying that Canon's killing the M series off. So are they going to bring out an M50 series 2 and then kill the whole line next year? Because without new zooms, uh, it's pretty much not worth staying in the system. I could, I might as well, if, if the M50 is going to be well over a thousand bucks to buy a new, it's going to be, pro, I'm assuming, around 1200 Australian. Um, for another 800 bucks again, I can go buy the Olympus, the pro model. Like, and I just got to sell my glass and then go get Olympus. I get the same sensor size, but I get better quality. I get a, like a pro level camera. So it's just, it's a little bit tense for me in that regard. So fingers crossed that it's, this is just the RF roadmap. That's the only thing I put on. This may be just the RF roadmap, which still gives some hope to the EF guys, but I, I really severely doubt that. And it's not looking good for us M series owners. So I'm sure we'll find out by Christmas uh, if they don't release any lenses before this year. Well, geez, I'd say it's, it's going to be touch and go whether you spend that extra money to buy an M50 series two when you know nothing's coming for it because. Apart from the 32 mil prime, uh, there's not a lot out there. All the zooms are massive. Like the 55 to 200 is a um, like a 4.5, so it's great for daylight and stuff, but useless at night. Um, the 15 to 40, none of none of them zooms can do anything at night time. So it's really really no good for video stuff. So a nice zoom at 2.8, 2.8, is, which is what we all want, which would be. A holy trinity in the M of all 2.8s would be amazing. That would keep the line going for a good five years easily, I think, until whatever, and then they could just get rid of it by then. So <clears throat> fingers crossed that's still coming. We'll find out what's happening. Right, Apple. Now, massive, massive leak. Uh, Kang, uh, a Chinese leaker, had let pretty much apparently got hold of the whole Apple video for Wednesday's show and has pretty much all the detail. There was was some things in there that didn't sound accurate and possibly a little bit off and a, and a bad translation from Chinese to English, <clears throat> but I'm gonna go through all that and we'll talk about it. Rightio, so there's gonna be a HomePod Mini, $99 US. Uh, it's only 3.3 inches tall, so it's friggin' tiny. It's a speaker, but it also acts, which John Prosser uh, had on Twitter today, it's gonna act as a hub for your wireless communications around the house. So if you've got your your uh, router in one room and you've got your hub up the other in the house, well then it's, I guess it's gonna be like a, a basic mesh network to help give you range extension and stuff like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's got the same chip as the Watch SE that just got released in it to run it, so that's pretty cool. Now, apparently all four models of the iPhone 12 will get millimeter waves 5g this year that's pretty much in uh, no earphones or chargers will be in any phones so that was pretty much uh, when they did the watch we figured it was going to be like that and i'd say it's pretty much 99.99 percent not going to be happening um smart data feature on the iphone 12s will change 
you from 4G to 5G to save battery life. 5G apparently smashes a heap of battery. So they've built in a function where if you're not using, if you're not downloading a ton of stuff, just running around just doing normal stuff and using or just doing phone stuff, it'll drop you back down to 4G so you don't use that extra battery power. So I think that's a pretty pretty smart feature and I'm assuming it's possibly just a standard feature that other companies in, but they're using that as a selling point. Uh, all phones are going to get super HDR screens, so an expanded screen. I'm not sure if we're going to have that option of that matte that they did on the iPads. That was pretty cool, which is on the same on their main XDR display, their Pro display. That would have been good. Uh, a ceramic shield cover as well will be on there, so scratches. Uh, air power, which is... The rumor that was come back, that's been changed to MagSafe, which is like the old plug in your side of the laptop, that same technology, uh, magnets. Now, it's not doesn't look like it's going to be built into the phones. It looks like Apple's bringing out their own range of cases, which is already out because mouse already does magnetic cases that clip onto your mouse. So it's nothing new. So we've already got that out. Um, and obviously, that will be used to centralize on air power. But again, they're Apple cases, then their cases are generally not good. Um, if I'm gonna put a $1,200, $1,500 phone, you wanna go something that's like a life proof or uh, like an element like mine, which is gonna protect it, or a mouse, which means you can drop it, you're never gonna break it. You're not gonna waste money on a case that's not gonna protect your phone. Otherwise, you might as well not use one if you just want looks, I guess. So that's a bit strange. I don't think that's gonna to be too much of a bonus for you. Um, <clears throat> they're going to have a single and double pot for the mag mag safe when that comes. So it'll be just like a little pad and then a double, which you can already get anyway. So there's nothing really new there. So it'll just be a, an improved version, I guess, of that as their starting point. Um, base models will have the dual camera. Now all the lenses have dropped down to f 1.6 on the wide and ultra. Uh, Pro models are going to go three camera, wide, ultra, telephoto, and the LiDAR. The wide on the Pros is going to be a seven lens design, so it should be a bit bit better lens on that. Four times optical zoom on the normal one, and on the Pro Max, it's going to be five times optical zoom. And I think that's just because of the it's going to have a wider, wider wide angle lens, and the, the same lenses on everything else. <clears throat> so you get the difference. That's how they work it out. Um, 47% bigger than the Pro, all models to record in Dolby Pro Vision. So Dolby Pro Vision, it's probably done, basically that's Dolby, you know, like the movies and stuff like that. Well, they've just released a new feature and Lou on Unbox Therapy was looking at the other day. It's uh, called like an ambient sound thing for Apple. It's a new, you can get it now, but you need Apple AirPods Pro. And it's like spatial, spatial music. I think Sony bought something similar out last year. So it's something along those lines. And it basically, so when you've got the headphones in and it knows where your phone is, so that'll keep you as the front speaker there. So when you turn or you move around, the, the music will change. Like if you were in a room or watching a movie, you'll get, if the car is coming from the left, you'll hear it on the left and then go to the right. You'll get a true surround sound experience. Apparently it's really good. If you go and check, uh, Lou over on Unbox Therapy, he, he he opens it up and goes right through it, and he was pretty impressed by it. So if he's impressed, he sees a lot of good stuff. Uh, it must be pretty good, and this Dolby Vision is what's necess uh, needed uh, to watch this and get that full uh, experience. I guess. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow. Um, now, you won't be able to order from until November the 13th, 14th. That's the other thing. We knew supply chain issues was going to be a big thing with Apple. Uh, I think this was from John Prosser, November 13th, 14th, and they won't be, then they'll be available on the 20th to 21st of November. So for us Australians, if you're waiting to get it through your telecom, which is what I normally do, because then you just pay it off month by month, uh, I'd be lucky, I reckon, if I see one, um, knowing Telstra's quality business program, uh, about February, I reckon. So I need no rush. I don't have to rush. <laughs> it's good, I think. You don't not have to rush because you can get then get to see all the different cases come out and all the other gear to use and make a good decision on what to buy. So you don't buy the first one. So you've got a case, 
and then you have to go and get another one because that one's pretty average and yeah so you're better off i don't mind waiting a little bit no super rush um now airpod studio that we talked about that that's the over ear uh, new airphone uh, headphones out from apple now the first ones are not going to be cheap the rumor is that john was saying that they're going to be the metal and leather ones first so the premium range is coming out straight away 600 us dollars so you're looking at a tidy let's say easy 900 australian bucks for a set of headphones wow they're not going to have to worry about rushing those out because they ain't going to sell stuff all you'd be crazy uh there is another model the sport mode which will be i guess like the beats plastic ones uh that will come out afterwards and they should be actually <clears throat> In reason, reasonable land for prices, I guess. <laughs> um, and AirPods, they won't be till 2021. They've been pushed back, so they're already going to be pushed back. Uh, yeah, it's not, not good at that front. They must have some issues going on there. Rightio. Still more to go. Hope you're still hanging in. <laughs> uh, Fuji XS10. This looks pretty cool. Uh, it's going to be an event on October the 15th, so... That's not far away. What are we, the 10th today? 12th today, three days. Event from Fuji, releasing this X-S10. Uh, pictures are all around the internet for it. Nice little compact camera. If it's anything like the X-T4, it's going to be a winner. Great colors. Fuji are renowned for their, their Turner profile, and the colors that come out of them are really, really good. So it should be good. Now, it's saying it's coming in, and I said it's a smallie. 465 grams, so half a kilo. That's like ultralight. That's in the M50 range. So you're going to be very interesting. I can't wait to see the price of this one. Uh, 4K 30. That's plenty. Full HD, 240 frames a second. Boom. That's going to go really well for the video-centric people. Uh, I know uh, there's a few people out there that just love that, that slow stuff. And that's going to be awesome for B-roll, 240 frames. It's going to be basically an entry-level camera. This is going to be cool for the Fuji system. Uh, 18 f different types of film simulations. So Fuji does a lot of film simulations. Uh, X-T3, I think, started. It was, I think it was around there. It started. So you can basically put in like a, if you knew an old film that you used to use in the old days, you can basically put that profile in and it sets up all the colors and everything like that to suit it. So that will be pretty cool. Uh, 30 frames a second, continuous shooting. Very cool. That's pretty wild. Oh, and a rumored $1,000 US price, so about the fourteen to 1500 So I said, it's going to be very close to the M50 Series 2. Uh, Series 2 M50 better be darn good because this is looking really flash. Uh, 26 megapixel X-Trans sensor, so the same one as the X-T4. Uh, a big, deep grip on it. Looks really, really good. IBIS built in five axis, uh, five axis, six stops of uh, stabilization. That should be really, really good. <clears throat> uh, auto mode will render in RAW, so you'll be able to shoot in auto and get RAW files out of it. So that's really cool. Uh, four custom modes, awesome. That is one thing that's definitely missing off the M50 is a custom mode. I know it's an M5, but the M5 is only really for photography. Uh, it would be handy on this to be able to just go custom mode, for one for video, one for photography, one for astro. That would be awesome if you could set it up like that, just on a, just on a turn of a dial. That would be amazing. Uh, HDMI micro on that one. It's got USB-C as well. No sort of hints on if you can record to SSD, which realistically needs to come. It's got to come on these other ones. There's a few that have put it in we've talked about but not their ones. And <clears throat> yeah, it's looking really good. So I'm super excited about that. October the 15th, oh, once that releases, I'll show you, I'll get the photos up tonight on the thumbnail. You'll be able to see that there, but this should be a nice little entry-level camera. Rightio, over on the fun stuff now, uh, Instagram, not a fun stuff, is to hide negative posts. So somehow they're gonna set up the algorithm, uh, Facebook and Instagram, to basically block negative posts. So if you put on there, uh, hey, 34 Media, you're an idiot. I uh, hate you. I'm going to come out of your house and belt you. Uh, somehow that's going to pick that up and block it. So there's no definitions on what's considered 
negative, that's going to be the grey area as with all sorts of things in that regard. So that's going to be interesting to see how they go about that. So stay tuned on that. It's going to be wild. Um, now, new Mer Mercedes come out. It's uh, the longest electric range out of an electric vehicle, sorry. Uh, it's called the EQXX. There's only sort of some little glimpses of shadows. I'm sure we're going to hear more. It's a bit of a prototype, so looking pretty wild. This the same Mercedes come out saying 1,200 kilometer range on one charge, which is just insane. Uh, insane. That's put, going to put some pressure back on Tesla. They're doing pretty well there around the, I think, six 700K mark, which is perfectly fine for a normal car. Anything over 500, I think, is the is the aim. Uh, that's what most cars get out of a tank of petrol. And if you're going to drive a massive long distance in the bush, you need long-range tanks. Um, 1,200 kilometers is going to be that sort of thing. But general driving, you're not going to need 1,200 kilometers for a charge. So that's pretty cool to see the technology. And it wasn't all batteries. It was some other stuff they finessed, they said. So that was cool. Now, Adidas, uh, they previously released a 3D printed sole shoe. Had like the mesh top, but the whole base is 3D printed and pretty funky and pretty what ultra light with basically all holes through it. And yeah, very, very cool. Well, they've gone a step further now and they've designed a machine which you've got a 3D, 3D printed uh, base sole and then your top layer that goes around your foot is custom sewed or custom weaved in every direction to give you perfect support for your foot uh, which is yeah very very crazy um i can't like you'll see the images if you go google it it's pretty wild lou had it on lou later and yeah very very funky i don't know why my music stopped sorry about this oh there we go yeah, so very wild, and it's and it's this had to design proprietary uh, robot that gets all these threads, and then it just and then crazy. You've got the shoe built; it's just insane. That is something to go check out when you get the five minutes on the search. And last but not least, now this is a wanted to finish. Interesting, I've got about two minutes to get it done before I run out of time. Uh, Apple has trademarked iPhone for life. Uh, Lou was talking about it on Lou later as well, what is it, you know, is it something to do with uh, your trade-ins for your phones? I did put a comment on there and straight away hit me and went, yeah, I've got a really good idea on this. iPhone for life means basically Apple's going to come, I, well, this is what I believe and I'll, I'll throw it out there, uh, a subscription phone service. So... Why would you try and have to keep selling and selling and selling when you can say, to you, hey, hey, Ash, if you give me $20 a month for the rest of your life, we'll give you an iPhone. Every year, we'll send you out a new one and you send us the old one back. We'll recycle all that to make the new ones and we'll just keep upgrading your phone every year, but you just pay us 20 bucks a month. When you stop your subscription, you can pull out any time. You send us the phone back, we'll stop charging you. Is that fair? That's what I think iPhone for life means. It uh, makes a lot of sense. They've just done the Apple One, which is a subscription, so you get the household. Imagine if you could just pick a tick a box and go, yep, yeah, I'll have the iPhone 12 Pro, tick, uh, 20 bucks a month, uh, radio, boom, and this rocks up, brand new phone. You don't have to worry about paying back anything. It just It just comes out like a set thing, like all your subscriptions for your Netflix and Stan and stuff like that. And every year, every September, as soon as the phone gets announced, bang, it's already in a box coming to your house. You're the first one to get a new phone because you're already, they've got all your details. They don't have to worry about you wait and have to buy it. They've already got all those pre-orders ready to go. So that would sell the subscription because you'd always be the first ones to get it. You would never have to worry. Uh, I think it's brilliant from Apple. I would say it's gonna happen pretty quick now that the cat's out of the bag. Uh, they'll want to get out before Samsung jumps on this and or one of the other big boys. <clears throat> Very smart idea, and I don't think it will be far off. Radio, right now my music's crapped it. I'm going to leave this to it. I will see you all again tomorrow. Stay safe, and thanks for dropping by. Mad, mad show. Okay, <laughs> doke. We'll be going that way. That way, I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.